Hello, this is Tony Blazer for the Motocross Vault presented by Blinzall. If you're in the market for some high quality racing oil for your two stroke or four, make sure you go to blinzall.com and use our discount code VAULT20 to save 20% at checkout. Thank you for all the support. Hello and welcome back to the Motocross Ball. My name is Tony Blazer, and what this video is going to cover is a look back at Yamaha's all new for 2003 YZ450F. This is the first year where Yamaha did a complete redesign of their first generation four stroke platform, the YZ400F. I had had one of those uh, 99 model, really loved it. It was a good bike, very heavy, but uh, very fun to ride. Uh, the 426 came out in 2000. My best friend Trenton bought one of those. I've had a good bit of experience riding that as well. And then when uh, 2002, when the Honda came out with the CRF, I moved over to Honda and got a CRF. And I really, really loved that bike. Uh, I know not everybody loved the first generation versus turning. I had no problem with it. But uh, when you rode it back to back with like the Yamaha, you could see that Honda was kind of pushing the envelope forward in a lot of ways, certainly in terms of the um, ease of riding it. that had less compression braking. It was easier to start, didn't have the starting drill. There were a lot of things that Honda had done with that first CRF that seemed like an improvement. I think Yamaha still had them covered in terms of reliability. Certainly the YZF motor was much more reliable than the, the, the uh, Unicam design on the Hondas. Didn't have the valve issues that Honda had, but uh, the bike was very heavy and stuff. And here in 2003, they made a complete redesign of the chassis, complete redesign of the motor. They used the same basic layout as far as the dual overhead cam design, the five valve head, but the motor was lighter, smaller, more compact. They added a, a finally the decompression system was automatic, so you could just kick in and go. They made a lot of improvements here in 2003. Now, this machine is a very different bike than the first generation, though, in that it runs extremely, uh, you know, I guess, aggressively. The, the power is very much more uh, sudden than the first generation uh, YZF400F engine, which was very mellow. I would say my first generation CRF450 actually ran much more like the original YZ400F. And this uh, 450 uh, Yamaha here in 2003 has a much more aggressive power band. Depending on your riding style and your skill, that may have been better or worse. Uh, for me, it felt like a handful. My, my best friend, Jamie, ended up buying one of these in 04, and uh, it was very similar to this 03, and man, it was a gnarly machine. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the four-speed transmission, and the, the power was very sudden. It just never really felt comfortable to me riding this bike. I had actually think I was more comfortable on the older ones, and uh, certainly much more comfortable on my CRF. I ended up uh, having that one for a couple of years and getting into 05. So uh, for me, at least in this era, I like the Hondas better. I think a lot of people did. But the Yamaha certainly had its devotees, and they had done a lot of stuff to make uh, significant improvements here in 2003 uh, to bring it more in line with what the Hondas were doing at the time. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about this uh, Yamaha, you can check out my video where I covered the history of the first generation, second generation, all the way up to modern day uh, Yamaha four strokes from 1998 through 2022. Uh, and I've also done several other retrospectives, including looks back at like the CR500 and Kawasaki's 500, CR80. Uh, you can find all those on my channel if you like this sort of thing. Make sure you check them out. If you like to support what I do, I have motocross vault merch available. I have all kinds of designs from different manufacturers. I'm also happy to do custom designs. I've done a few with putting people's names and numbers on the back of their shirt with the bike they own or something on there. Uh, just hit me up at the motocross vault at gmail.com if you'd like me to do something uh, custom for you or hit me up via social media at Tony Blazer on Instagram and Twitter as well. Uh, so there will be a card in the description and a link to uh, my Teespring store here in the description as well. If you'd like to check out what I do and have support the motocross vault. So here, without further ado, is a look back at the 2003 Yamaha YZ450F. In 1998, Yamaha kicked off the modern four-stroke revolution with the introduction of its groundbreaking YZ400F. Before the YZ400F, most motocross four-strokes offered slow-building power bands that chugged and churned rather than barked and blasted. This style of power was excellent off-road, but not always ideal for the cut-and-thrust world of motocross. Mega thumpers like ATK605, Husqvarna's TC610, KTM620, and Husaberg's FC501 had their fans, but the majority of mainstream motocross racers found them to be more of a curiosity than a viable racing alternative. Where the YZ400F broke new ground was in the design of its motor. By using the short stroke and five valve Genesis head from their road racing department, Yamaha was able to imbue the YZ400F with a quick revving style of power that was completely unlike any other four stroke motocrosser before it. With its ultra-smooth power band, the YZF could find traction on nearly any surface, while still offering enough power to outmuscle most of its two-stroke competitors. It was both remarkably fast and incredibly easy to ride, and consumers snapped them up in droves. 
While the original YZ400F proved to be an incredible commercial success, it was not without its share of peccadillos. The YZF's weight remained substantially higher than its two-stroke competitors, and that heavy feel never really went away on the track. Overall handling was excellent, but if the big blue machine got out of shape, it was a handful to rein it back in. Starting the 400F was also an adventure of its own, with the machine requiring an elaborate starting ritual that was difficult to master and nearly impossible to execute in the heat of battle. Grabbing a handful of throttle was often rewarded with a hiccup from the motor, and having the machine hesitate in an inopportune moment was a surefire recipe for trouble. Technical jump combinations that were easy to execute on an ultra-responsive two-stroke were often more like playing Russian roulette on the sometimes unpredictable YZF. Compared to every other four-stroke before it, the YZF was a revelation, but that did not stop it from suffering from many of the same drawbacks as its valve and cam predecessors. In 2000, Yamaha introduced the first major update to their YZF platform in the form of the all-new YZ426F. Visually, the machines were almost identical, but the new 426F featured an all-new motor, revamped frame, updated suspension, and a two-pound weight savings over the 1999 model. The new motor displaced an additional 26 cc's and offered a completely new personality on the track. Whereas the original YZ400 pumped out a smooth and electric style of power that pulled from the bottom to the top without any hit or drama, the new YZ426F barked out of the hole and snarled through the midrange. The new motor was much more like a traditional big bore four-stroke in its personality and a significant departure from the Rev Happy 400F. At the time, most racers seemed to like this change and the YZF continued to dominate the big bore four-stroke wars. As the 2000s started, however, the YZF began to feel a bit more pressure from its competitors. The all-new Cannondale MX400 turned out to be largely vaporware, but KTM's all-new 520SX proved its mettle with a romp and stomp and power band and a 15-pound advantage over the 426F. Neither of the new machines were capable of unseating Yamaha as the king of motocross thumpers, but the class was certainly heating up. In 2002, the power structure of the four-stroke class finally shifted with the introduction of Honda's all-new YZF competitor, the CRF 450R. Employing the third generation of its innovative alloy chassis and featuring an all-new Unicam motor design, the CRF addressed many of the issues four-stroke holdouts had been voicing about the original Yamaha. Lighter, sleeker, smoother, and easier to start than the YZ, the CRF offered two-stroke converts an easy transition to life without premix. Nearly overnight, starting gates across the country were awash in red Unicam machines. With the tremendous success of the CRF 450R, it was pretty apparent that Yamaha would need to step up its game to recapture the top position in the four-stroke division. As competitive as the YZ426F was, its XR-like weight, stale looks, infuriating starting drill, and fondness for hesitation made it a tough sell when pitted against the easier-to-live-with Honda. Both machines were capable of winning, but most riders found the CRF to be the superior machine of the two. With so much profit and prestige at stake, Yamaha came ready to play in 2003. The original YZF platform was retired, and an all-new machine was introduced to do battle with Honda's incredibly popular Thumper. In all, Yamaha made 185 distinct changes in the transition from the YZ426F to the reimagined YZ450F. Weight savings was a major focus on the new design, and Yamaha's engineers looked at every component as a way to save a few precious ounces. On the motor front, Yamaha retained the same basic dual overhead cam layout and 5-valve head they had used since 1998, but added 3.3 millimeters of stroke to raise the displacement to 449 cc's. An all-new cylinder shed weight by dropping two bolts from the cylinder base, and a new head lowered the center of gravity by reducing its height by 7 millimeters. The valves remained titanium in construction, but were slightly shorter and 18% lighter than in 2002. Paired with the new valves were more compact springs and repositioned cams that allowed for a straighter valve angle within the head. A new automatic decompression system finally made its way to the valve train to simplify starting and bring it on par with Honda and KTM. A new crankshaft assembly reduced weight by 20% and a 7% lighter piston was added to improve motor response. In a nod to Tim Ferry's works machine, New cutouts were added to the cylinder skirt to reduce pumping pressure and further free up the top end. The cam chain tensioner, oil pump, CDI, ignition coil, and flywheel were all reduced in size to lower weight and shrink the overall footprint of the motor. A new intake saved 12 ounces by redesigning the clamps to be internal, and all the oil lines were moved from steel to aluminum to further save a few ounces. 
In another nod to the Works Yamaha machines, the transmission was moved from a 5-speed to a 4-speed for 2003. Yamaha claimed the new transmission was both lighter and stronger than the old 5-speed, with new ratios designed to take advantage of the new motor's additional torque. A new airbox shed 12 ounces, and a redesigned exhaust swapped out steel for titanium in most of its major components. On the chassis front, the YZ was just as all-new and improved. The redesigned frame shaved three pounds off the 2002 through the use of thinner cross tubing, a tapered steering head, and a smaller oil tank. A new rear brake lowered weight by adopting Honda's integrated master cylinder design and reducing the size of the caliper and piston. Up front, a new aluminum caliper piston improved feel and further shaved ounces. An all-new swing arm featured a tapered design and a smaller axle block to save 80 grams. Even the chain slider was redesigned to save 25 grams for 2003. On the suspension front, a new shock saved 40 grams of weight and was paired with an 8-ounce lighter spring. The spring rates remained unchanged from 2002, but a higher grade of steel was used to reduce weight. Internally, the new shock was similar to the 2002 aside from the use of lighter weight materials inside. Up front, the YZ400F retained the Kiaba bumper forks it had used in 2002, but added new valving, a redesigned damper rod, and new stanchions with less taper to improve feel. Visually, the biggest change for 2003 was its all-new bodywork. This was the first major update to the YZF's look since its introduction in 1998, and Yamaha took the opportunity to make major changes to its layout and feel. Everything from the fenders to the side plates was all new, with a lower, thinner, and flatter feel throughout. The new tank was narrower and less intrusive into the riding compartment with a lower capacity of 1.85 gallons from its previous 2.1 gallon capacity. This allowed easier rider movement and saved 10 ounces of weight. The seat was flatter through the middle and slimmer at the front, making it easier to slide forward in turns. The new side plates remained very large and continued to incorporate handy cutouts to aid lifting the machine when necessary. Altogether, the many changes Yamaha made to the YZ in 2003 added up to a claimed 13 pound savings over 2002. When motocross action weighed the two bikes full of fuel and ready to race, the true number grew to a whopping 18 pounds difference. This was an incredible difference year over year and a testament to how much effort Yamaha put into trimming weight on their YZF. At a claimed 232 pounds, the new Yamaha undercut both the CRF 450R and KTM's 450SX in 2003 and leapfrogged the YZ from the portliest machine in the class to the most svelte of all the 450 offerings. On the track, all of these changes added up to a faster, leaner, and more serious machine. While the 2002 426F was no slouch in the power department, it was no comparison to the fire breather Yamaha produced in 2003. The all-new 449cc dual overhead cam mill revved faster, hit harder, and pulled longer than ever before. It barked off the bottom, exploded in the mid-range, and pulled till the cows came home on top. Unlike the Honda, which was smooth and pleasant, the YZF was all fire and brimstone. On the dyno, it pumped out three more horsepower than the Honda, and every one of those ponies was apparent any time you twisted the throttle. It revved fast, hit hard, and demanded attention to keep things under control. The new motor did away with a lot of the chug of the previous 426F, and not everyone was a fan of this change. The occasional low RPM stumble remained, but it was less pronounced than in the previous Yamaha offerings. With the new motor, there was less compression braking once the throttle was closed, but the engine was harder to control under power and a lot easier to stall. At least if you did stall it, it was no longer a nightmare to get it relit. The new automatic decompression system did away with the elaborate starting drill of its predecessors and brought the Yamaha on par with its kick-and-go rivals. Compared to a typical 252 stroke, the YZ450F offered excellent hookup, but when pitted against KTM or Honda's four strokes, the YZF was a handful. Its hard hit and fast spin-up made throttle control critical, and the bike could be a handful for less experienced riders to handle. If there was deep soil and tons of traction, the YZ was a dream with gobs of usable power on tap. If, however, the track was hard and slick, the Yamaha demanded more care with the throttle than its rivals to put all that power to the ground. With so much muscle on tap, most racers did not miss the additional gear in the transmission, but many felt the bike would have benefited from a slightly heavier flywheel. Adding some weight to the flywheel smoothed out the explosive hit, aided hookup, and reduced stalling. With this addition, the fire-breathing Yamaha became a much more livable companion. While most off-roaders were never going to love the 4-speed transmission, 
With the heavier flywheel and some fine tuning to the gearing, it was not an issue for motocross use. On the suspension front, the YZ was rated well in most categories. The new valving provided a slightly firmer feel, and the bike was well balanced overall. Up front, the Kiaba forks provided 11.8 inches of travel and external adjustments for compression and rebound damping. In stock condition, they were well sorted and stiffer feeling than the Honda's Shawa components, but still compliant enough to take the bite out of most track obstacles. Bottoming was not an issue, and most riders below the Pro class could get by without revalving or any kind of spring swap. Lighter and slower riders found the plusher feel of the Honda components preferable, but for serious racers, the YZF's more aggressive fork settings were a good match. In the rear, the Yamaha once again ranked at or near the top of the class. The stock shock settings were firm, and the rear delivered a well-controlled ride in most situations. It was reasonably compliant on small chop and excellent at dealing with big hits. This was a significant improvement over previous Yamaha four-strokes, which had often felt undersprung for their substantial weight. Just as with the forks, the KYB shock was not as plush as the stock Honda unit, but most fast guys preferred the firmer feel of the Yamaha. On the handling front, the YZ450F continued to be a great all-around machine. Turning precision was excellent, with the combination of the motor's strong compression braking, well-sorted suspension, and excellent chassis design providing exceptional front-end feel. The new flatter seat and slimmer tank made it easier than ever to get forward in turns, and the Yamaha could be trusted to hold its line without any fear of an unexpected washout. In most conditions, the YZF cornered like it was on rails, and the bike was surprisingly adept at changing direction for such a big and powerful machine. While the Yamaha's front traction was exemplary, it could be a bit tricky to manage on the exit of turns if the track was hard or slick. The YZF's sudden delivery and monster hit made finding traction in these situations more of a challenge than on the competition, and the Blue Bruiser was known to hang out his tail suddenly if the pilot was ham-fisted with the throttle. The stock seat was also very slippery, and many riders thought the Yamaha could have used a more grippy seat cover. Without it, it was a constant battle to keep your weight forward as the Yamaha's megatons of thrust tried to pull you off the back. Much like an old-school 500 two-stroke, keeping the Yamaha gear high and being smooth with the throttle were the best techniques to keep the sometimes unruly machine in line. At speed, the YZF was in its element, and the bike was excellent at gobbling up big swaths of track in a hurry. Even without a fifth gear, the Yamaha was capable of quasar speeds, and the bike was a bullet train when it built up a head of steam. There was not even a hint of head shake, and nothing short of an act of God was likely to knock the Yamaha off its intended path. Interestingly, even though the YZ was substantially lighter than before, it did not feel as light as the scale proclaimed it to be. Despite its lower weight, it felt heavier than the Honda and KTM on the track. It was a substantial improvement over the previous YZ426F, but riders were never going to mistake the big and powerful YZ450 for anything but the open bike that it was. On the detailing front, the YZ450F was excellent in most respects. In addition to being the powerhouse of the class, Yamaha's 5-valve dual overhead cam motor proved to be by far the most reliable. Its small and light titanium valves required less maintenance than the Honda, and the dry sump motor's additional oil capacity gave it a margin of error not found on the CRF. As long as you change the oil and clean the air filter regularly, the YZ450 was as bulletproof as any racing machine had a right to be. Its air filter was also far easier to access than the one found on the Honda. Both, however, were disappointing when compared to the toolless access offered by KTM. Off-road enthusiasts and more casual riders hated the 4-speed transmission, but most racers did not find it a huge hindrance for motocross use. Some riders did complain that it occasionally felt between gears, but it shifted well and most of the gaps could be managed with gearing changes aimed at individual track conditions. While the 4-speed worked well enough, many pit pundits thought deleting the 5th gear was an odd choice by Yamaha. It greatly hindered the YZ450F's appeal for anything other than the track, and considering consumers often buy 450s for their versatility, the pound or so of weight savings it yielded seemed like a poor trade-off to many. While not as trick-looking as the Honda's aluminum frame, the Yamaha steel frame construction did have its advantages. Without the Honda's massive frame spars, access to the motor and carburetor was much improved. The bike was also slightly thinner through the middle, without the frame getting in the way. Cosmetically, all three 450s were handsome when new, but the painted frame, dark blue plastic, and flimsy graphics of the Yamaha tended to show their age far quicker than the competition. The powder-coated frame of the KTM and the bare aluminum chassis of the CRF looked new longer, and both offered graphics that proved more robust when under hard use. The butter-soft steel bars, flimsy stock sprocket, and stretch-prone chain were par for the course for the Japanese bikes of the time, and all three paled in comparison to the higher-quality components found on the KTM. 
The YZF continued to use a rather convoluted front brake routing due to Honda's patents, but its performance was excellent. The brakes were powerful front and rear, and the new integrated rear master cylinder seemed to avoid the overheating issues that had plagued Honda's move to the system. With its powerful brakes and tons of compression braking, the YZF was a hard machine to outbreak despite its large size. Overall ergonomics were praised, with the new layout offering a flatter and slimmer feel that did away with the pocket that had trapped some riders in place on the previous design. Some riders did find the seat to peg relationship slightly cramped, but it fit most pilots very well. While the bike was easier to move around on in 2003, many riders were less enthusiastic about the new seat, which was noticeably less comfortable than the old version. The redesigned seat featured foam that was very thin and firm, with the plastic base being noticeable on hard landings. Both the KTM and Yamaha seats were akin to sitting on a slightly padded brick in 2003, and nearly everyone preferred the cushier saddle found on the Honda. The grips, levers, shifter, and running gear were all top-notch, with a comfortable feel and smooth action. With the hot start move to the bars and its automatic decompression system, the YZF moved from the hardest bike to start to one of the easiest. Typically, one good kick was all it took to get the blue beast lit. After five years of starting drill misery, this was a tremendous improvement for anyone thinking of buying a Yamaha four-stroke. Overall, the new Yamaha YZ450F turned out to be a bit of a polarizing machine in 2003. With its well-sorted suspension, excellent handling, rocket-fast motor, and lightweight, it was just the machine that many riders have been longing for the blue team to produce. Easy to start, well put together, and stone reliable, the YZF had a lot to offer, but it did require a lot in return. Not a machine for putting or playing, the YZ450F was a brutish bike built to win on the track at the expense of everything else. Hard, stiff, fast, and razor focused, the Yamaha YZ450F was a hairy chested beast of a machine that demanded respect, but delivered performance by the megaton. So there you have it. That's a look back at the 2003 Yamaha YZ450F, a machine that uh, definitely was certainly much more, I guess, uh, hardcore motocross oriented. Yamaha certainly made some decisions this year that probably alienated some off-road guys and people like myself who are looking more for a do-it-all machine. I, I think, I mean, obviously, there's probably the majority of these bikes probably never saw a motocross track, or if they did, they were just for fun. Uh, most people don't race that buy these bikes. A lot of times, they're just buying them to have a do-it-all, take it out on the weekend, trail ride a little bit, hit the track occasionally, stuff like that. And I think going with the four-speed transmission was probably a poor decision by Yamaha's uh, on that case, but... Overall, I think it was a better motocross bike. If you're looking for a hardcore motocross machine, it certainly was an improvement. Me personally, I still think uh, the CRF was a better machine uh, other than reliability. Certainly the Yamaha had it covered in terms of the overall durability of the engine, but I did feel more comfortable on the Hondas. I think they're much more comfortable, uh, everything from the way the seat felt to the ergonomics to the way the motor ran. I was much more comfortable on the Hondas in this year. I had several of them, and uh, riding them back-to-back -back with like my buddy's YZF, I never just really felt anywhere near as comfortable on the Yamaha. But, again, lots of people love these Yamahas. They were great, great motocross machines in their own right. It just was a little bit more hard edge, probably, than what I was looking for at the time. If you like this sort of thing, make sure you check out some of the other videos I've done. I've done retrospectives on all kinds of other models, motocross, ATV, and otherwise. Uh, if you'd like me to do something else in the future that I haven't covered, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. I'm happy Happy to see if I have the information to cover it in the future. If you'd like, subscribe and share on social media as well, I would very much appreciate it. So until we meet again, this is Tony Blazer for the Motocross Vault. Keep the rubber side down. Peace.